Welcome back. Thank you for clicking on today's video. Today we're going to be continuing our conversation on the sampling distribution of a statistic. Specifically here today we'll be doing the sampling distribution of x-bar. Now in the last video I actually talked about the sampling distribution of x-bar, but because we mostly looked at the sampling distribution of p-hat, um, although the characteristics are the same and the facts are the same, um, I wanted to show you here with the simulator what the sampling distribution of x-bar would look like. So first, the link to this applet or simulator is in the description below. So if you're interested in doing this yourself, please check that out. Uh, we're utilizing StatCrunch. And to orient you to what you're seeing, um, the very top of the uh, graph, so the top graph is the population. The middle graph is going to be a sample and the bottom graph is going to be the sample means. Now, remember that our ultimate goal with understanding sampling distribution information is to be able to understand um, how to use the sample estimate to make an inference on the parameter that we're interested in. So we need to understand how to measure that sampling variability, and that's why this information is necessary for us. So when I take a sample, let's start with samples of size five. Um, you can see that here we're at size five. If I take one sample, so one time, it's gonna draw five people from this population. And then it calculates a sample mean, and that's what's going to go into the sampling distribution that's in the bottom graph. So again, I take a sample, I did it one time, and now that sample mean from the sample that came from the population is falling down into this bottom graph. So you can see we've taken two samples. So if I do it again, it takes five, sam five individuals from the population, this is that sample, and then it calculates a sample mean, and again, that's what's in the sampling distribution. So if I do it again, again, five individuals from the population go into the sample, and then a mean is calculated, and it goes into the sampling distribution. Again, we're at size four. So if I keep doing this over and over, so if I do five samples of size five, <clears throat> It's still taking samples, bringing the sample mean down into the sampling distribution. We do it again. Now we're up to 10 samples. So you can see the sample estimates falling out. You can see that the mean is at 23. And remember that this is the mean of the sampling distribution. Up here, that population mean that we're trying to get to is 25. You can also see that my standard deviation is 5 here. And down here, it's 2.67. So let's jump up to samples of size um, 1,000 samples. And one thing to notice is that we have a standard deviation of about 2.3, and then the mean is about 25, which is good because that means that all of these x bars that are down here are centering themselves around that population mean. We can also see that the shape of this distribution appears to be normal. So let's keep going. So let's go up to samples of size 50. So we're gonna start all over. And then I'm going to take one time, and these are 50 individuals from that population. Again, this is the sample mean from this sample. Let's do one more time. Again, 50 individuals from this population. That uh, group of people created this sample mean that's down here. If I did it a thousand times, now what I want you to notice is that we have a thousand and two samples. Um, our mean is approximately 25. It's 24.95, and this time our standard deviation is 0.7 three about and it does have that normal shape so the one thing that's a big change is the standard deviation or that variability measurement decreased when I went from samples of size 5 to size 50 okay let's change and do samples of size 500 so again I'm going to take a sample one time these 500 individuals made this sample mean so this is an x-bar again this population 500 individuals were selected from it and it created this sample mean so we'll do it a thousand times and see the results, and then we'll switch to a different shape. So here you can see that I have a mean of 24.99, and this time the standard deviation goes down to 0 0.23, which is um, smaller than the 50. So what we're noticing is that the center, and this is fact number one, the center of that sampling distribution is mu, which is that population mean of 25. The other thing that we notice is as you increase the sample size, so we went from five to 50 to 500, that standard deviation measurement of variability decreased as you increase the sample size. And then you can't really see the shape of the sample mean. Um, it appears that they're so narrow in the center, but I would say it's probably gonna be bell-shaped if you zoomed in. So let's switch and start with a population that has a right skew. 
So this time we have a mean of 14, and we're going to go through those same iterations to see if the facts that we saw from the last original population coincide with this one, which is a right skewed um, original population. So we'll do samples of size five. And again, I'm going to take one sample. It draws five individuals from this population. And then down here is our sample mean. So we have one sample, again, five individuals from this population. And down here, this sample mean was created from this sample. So if I went to a thousand times, what you notice is that that center is at about, about 14, which is the population mean. So that's good. And then the shape though is right skewed. So Let's keep an eye on that. And then also the standard deviation is 5.2. So let's keep an eye on that. So I'm gonna bump it up to 50 and we'll see what happens. So again, 50 individuals are selected from this original population. This is that sample and that creates this sample mean. So let's bump it up to a thousand times. And now you can see that my mean is 14.11. So close to the population mean or approximately equal. And my standard deviation has decreased to 1.68 approximately. So we're seeing that this shape now appears to be approximately bell shaped. Um, if we go to 500, let's see what happens now. So I take one sample. This is the sample that comes from this population. That's my sample mean. If I do it a thousand times, now what you notice is that my mean is 14.04, which is approximately equal to the population mean. You can see that my standard deviation decreased again, and then my uh, shape of my distribution is approximately bell-shaped. So those are those three facts. The center of the sampling distribution is equal to the population parameter. So if your sampling distribution is p hat, the center is p. If the sampling distribution is x bar, then the center is mu. You've noticed that as the sample size increases, the variability decreases. And then we've also noticed that as the sample size increases, like we did here, the shape begins to look more and more bell-shaped. And I just wanna emphasize that one more time. So let's say we have samples of size two you can see that this is extremely right skewed. Let's say we go up to samples of size 10 and take a thousand samples. You can see that that's slightly right skewed. Let's say I go up to samples of size 20. I take a thousand samples. You see it's beginning to look more and more bell shaped. If I take a sample of size 40, you can see it looks very normal there. So those are those three facts. That's me emphasizing what we saw in the last video. Um, check this uh, website out or this applet. It's kind of fun to play around with. Otherwise, I'll see you in future videos.